There are so many beautiful reasons to be happy. Be happy. Be who you want to be. And if others doesn't like it, then let them be. Happiness is a choice. Life isn't about pleasing everybody. So as you can see, these are just quotes that I have read online. I just want to share it to all of you because I know how hard life is. So in a simple way, I just want to encourage you to be happy. I want to start this lesson with a happy and positive ambience. So good day everyone. Now that we are done with the settlement of America, today we are going to discuss the American dialects. Okay, let us have the overview of today's discussion. So later on, we will know what is a dialect, what is American dialects, what are the different dialects of American English. Okay, so we have the Eastern New England, the New York City, Upper North and Lower North, Upper South and Lower South, General American, African American Vernacular English, Hispanic American English. And later on, we will also be explaining the mechanics that of the activity that we will be having on our face-to-face -face session. We will also be showing the references that we've had in this discussion. Good day, everyone. So what is dialects? Dialects is a particular form of language peculiar to a specific region or social group. Dialects are linguistic varieties that may differ in pronunciation, vocabulary, spelling, and grammar. So, in simple words, dialect is a subgroup version of the language. A person's dialect is reflected in their accent. In this way, a person's accent can occasionally reveal their place of origin. For example, some of you who came from Buhi, Naga, Bula, or in any part of our province have different words or terms when saying a specific thing or action. For example, the word later in Buhinon, they say it as Kina, but Rinconada, we say it as Nyanod. In Bicol Naga, they say egg as Suguk, while in Rinconada, we say it as Itlog. Every municipality has different terms or words in certain situations, just like language. For example, I will say, Hi, my name is Rain, in English. I can say it as konnichiwa, watashi no namai wa rin desu in Japanese, and bonjour, je m'appelle rin in French. Dialect is just like a sibling of language. The only difference is dialect is only spoken by a small community or a social group. Next is American dialects. What is American dialects? American dialects are the spoken sets of language mainly used in the United States of America. So, do you think American English is the same language that all Americans use? Mm, if you say yes, you're quite incorrect. In fact, if you've been to Los Angeles, New York, or Oklahoma, you'd understand this quickly. Most likely, Americans speak different dialects of English depending on where they were raised. To buy a soda or a pop, an American might enter a convenience store. An American might say they're eating sucker or lollipops. An American might say they're going to park the car or they're going to park the car. They might be fixing to do something or about to do it. So I'm going to show you a short video about accents or dialects. I never thought I had an accent, but everyone else told me I did. So I never really understood my accent. But we say soda pop and that was weird, I guess. The great thing about Oklahoma is it's really this confluence of a whole bunch of different parts of the country. So the, the northern part of the state is really like the plains, so people kind of have that flat Iowa accent. People always know I'm from the Midwest when I say bagel. 
but if you get down south to the Little Dixie portion, it has a much more of a southern drawl. Elongating those vowels a little bit. And saying y'all every sentence. How y'all doing today? Y'all wanna go to Waffle House? Come on over, we'll go to Waffle House. It's just like real round in your mouth, and you're just like, hey y'all, how we doing tonight? Um, are you guys gonna go down to the game this weekend? I'm so excited. Like Joshua's doing real great this year. Everybody talks really slow, especially compared to New Yorkers. Most New Yorkers are loud. You gotta fit your way into a conversation most often times when you're in New York. Vermont's accent is uh, very unique and it's hard to slip into unless you're talking to another person who like grew up farming. But the phrase that I can say in my accent is always, oh sure bud, oh sure. People from California kind of have like, they say like. Colorado doesn't really have a typical accent. Lots of people say that it has no accent, but you'll definitely get called out if you say Colorado. It's Colorado. So I've been told from people in New York that my state has an accent. Some people go Chicago. I don't think we do. There's parts that I can hear like a little bit of a twang and kind of sound like this. Some people in New Mexico have accents, depending on what part of the state you're from. People in the South tend to sound a little bit more like they could be from Texas. Really wide syllables, really kind of drawn out phrases. It's a little sing-songy, like a little bit valley girl almost. I'm from New Mexico and I love eating burritos. You wanna go skiing up on mountain? Pass me those taters. <laughs> I don't know, I mean like there's cowboys, you know, there's horses. I don't know, because I don't feel like I have an accent. I went home a couple of years ago and was watching home videos of my sister and I, and we had to like do a weather forecast as like little kids, and we'd be like, there's a big hurricane coming from the, the left coast, but don't worry because we don't know that it's coming. And people would be like, what are you saying? I can put on the, you gotta park the con hop, Dion, give the god a quarter for some chowder. That's a standard Boston accent right there. Any E-R would have an A-H at the end. It's kind of like, Boston, but cooler and a bit more drunk. Like, we gotta go up to Baja, but to get some lobster supper. My mom has this kind of strange, half French Canadian, half Boston accent that sounds like peanut characters. Bwomp, bwomp. Oh, if you're from North Dakota, you've got some long O's. Oh yeah, you betcha. Yeah, hang on to your R's a little too. It gets a little bit thicker the older you are. Your grandma sounds a little bit like this. Your mom might be a little bit softer. I'm from Wisconsin. Go pack, go. It kind of gets like up here. Go pack. I say big. I have some eggs and a big. The best example of the Wyoming accent I feel like I've ever seen was in Brokeback Mountain. One curve in the road and they missed it. So if you live in Washington state, no one ever says they have an accent. They all think they speak pretty normal, which is kind of true. Just kind of middle of the road, sort of like Delaware itself. But they also kind of have like a country hit kind of thing to them. So they'll say like, Washington, like I'm gonna wash my hands. And you're like, wash? What kind of a word is that? We pronounce our T's as D, so we say like Connecticut instead of Connecticut. I feel like Michigan's typical accent um, is very nasally. Hi, like that type of vibe. So if I'm from like Northside Kauai, I'm going to sound something like this. People say that us Marylanders have accents, but I don't think we have an accent. Idaho doesn't have a really distinct accent. There's no accent in Indiana. This might be very biased, but I don't think we, I really don't think we have an accent. I don't hear it but I get reminded of it when I travel. I mean, I, I think this is normal. It's a perfect neutral Pacific Northwest tone. Sarah Palin does not have a typical Alaska accent. She's not really from there. She grew up in, I don't know, Kansas or something. My husband laughs at me because I say wolf instead of wolf. Our accents are all over the place. The first one that comes to my head is a Latino one. Me voy a coger un cortadito. There's the St. Louis accent where we say certain things like, Waters and water. Where I'm from, they like to say Haina or Mayan. That shirt over there is Mayan. From Philly, they like to say Wooder and use guys. But in Pittsburgh, instead of use guys, they say Yins. What are Yins doing? North Carolina is, is it's, it's an interesting accent. It's just got a little bit of a drawl. It's a little lazier. Just very slow pace, very good, very nice. There's Charles in South Carolina, which is more like this. It's more smooth. It might have a daughter named Darcy. And then you got the real squealy, squealy Southern accent. And then you just got the very just, hey, how you doing? God bless. You have a good day now. 
Tanaka. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching our my provided short video for American dialects or American accent. There are roughly 30 to 50 major American dialects in my research or based on my research. But totally there are 200 plus American dialects all in all in America. So before we go to the next slide, I would like to show you um the map of america so i would like to give the floor to the next reporter which is miss sinfuego okay so now that we've known the definition of the dialect and the american dialects let us have the first dialect of the american english with it which is the eastern new england so eastern new england's english is historically known as yankee dialect since at least the 19th century now this is the traditional dialect of Maine, New Hampshire, and eastern half of Massachusetts. This encompasses Boston and Maine accents and the distinct Rhode Island accent. So we have here the phonology of the eastern New England. So we have non-rhoticity, linking and intrusive a, backing of oo, possible lack of host host merger, possible lack of the merry 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 mergers and the short A nasal system. But before we proceed with discussing the phonology of the Eastern New England, let us have or let us know first the roticity in English. So when we say roticity in English, it is the pronunciation of the historical rhotic consonant A by English speakers. The presence or absence of roticity is one of the most prominent distinctions by which varieties of English can be classified. So we have two varieties. We have the rhotic variety and the non-rhotic variety. So let us have first the rhotic varieties. So in rhotic varieties, the historical English R sound is preserved in all pronunciation contexts. While in non-rhotic varieties, speakers no longer pronounce R in post-vocalic environments. That is, when it is is immediately after a vowel and not followed by another vowel so now that we have unlocked the difficulty or the word roticity let us have the phonology of the eastern new england so eastern new england uh, they are a non-rhotic variety so the r sound may be dropped or silent except before a vowel so here's here are some of the examples the words car card and chowder in eastern new england they pronounce this as car cod and chowder we also have the infamous phrase the park the car in harvard yard so in eastern new england they pronounce this or we have here the dialectally transcribed in the Eastern New England, the park, the car, and Harvard Yard. We also have the linking and intrusive A. So any words that ends in A as in Cuba, A as in spa, and A as in law can be followed by an unwritten A when followed by vowel sound the next word. We have here an example, the phrase law and public safety. In Eastern New England, they pronounce this as law and public safety. We also have the backing of U, the vowel U. Uh, for example, the word goose, rude, and coop remains pronounced relatively far back in our mouth. So notice that when you pronounce the words goose, rude and coop it remains pronounced relatively far back in our mouth we have the possible lack of the host host measure so we have an example here the host host for for and war and war notice that they have different um spelling and they also have different um meaning but they have the same pronunciation we also have the possible lack of the Mary 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 mergers. So before the intervocalic a, the vowels a as in Mary, a as in Mary, 
and uh, as in Mary are distinguished from one another so we have the short a nasal system so the short a nasal system sound a may be tensed in various environments though most severely before a nasal consonant so we have here in examples the word man clam and any so we also have vocabulary and grammatical features of the eastern new england we have bang this means to make a sudden or decisive turn while driving bubbler also called water bubbler or a drinking fountain we have the word pizza from the word pizza with a boston accent that means great or amazing so this is occasionally combined with the word wicked to yield wicked pizza so we have also so don't i so do i and i do too we have spa which means a neighborhood convenience store that has a soda fountain and often sells sandwiches we also have the word tonic we have here the um the phonological term of the word tonic it this means any sweet carbonated soft drink chiefly confined to boston otherwise known as soda in the region or pop elsewhere next is we have the new york city so new york city english or metropolitan new york english is a regional dialect of american english spoken by many people in new york city this is the most recognizable dialect as described by the social linguist William Labov. Its pronunciation system is New York accent. So we have here the phonology of the New York City. Uh, New York City dialect is also a non-Botic variety. We have the short A split, split system. The highly stigmatized and largely now extinct Kalkalmaja the possible lack of the Mary 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 merges at a high gliding of vowel. So in New York City they are also a non botic variety, same with the eastern New England. So the R sound may be dropped or silent except before a vowel. So the words car, cod and chowder and the infamous phrase park the car in Harvard Yard same with the um, Eastern New England. We also have the short A split system. So in which, for example, the A in gas is not assonant to the A in gap. So we have also a high gliding of vowel in words like talk, thought, and all. The possible lack of the Mary 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 merger. So before intervocalic R, the vowels E eh, in, as in Mary. E as in Mary and E as in Mary are distinguished from another. So we have the highly stigmatized and largely now existing Kol Kol Maja. So we have an example here. The word Kol in Kol, the verse in verse. So this merger is responsible for the Brooklynese stereotypes of bird sounding like bird and 33rd sounding like 33rd. So this merger is also known for the word certainly used often by the three stooges comedian Curly Howard as a ver variant of certainly. So we have the vocabulary and grammatical features of the New York City. We have the word bodega which means a small neighborhood convenience store. We have the bob keys, a worthless amount, a little or nothing. We also have have a catch, which means to play a game of catch. The use, the plural form of you, in addition to you guys, or possibly performatively use guys. So we, lastly, we have the word punk. This tends to be used as a, as a synonym for weak. For the Upper North, Western New England, Upstate New York, and the Basin of the Great Lakes. And for the Lower North, like the dialect of the Upper North, Lower North Preserve are in all positions. Morning from Morning and Horse from Horse are examples of Upper North dialect. It distinguishes all in words. 
also like the dialect of Eastern New England and in contrast with the preva prevailing forms of the Pennsylvania settlement area, the Upper North has G regularly in with S in Greece, verb and greasy and U in roots. While Lower North, Fast, Ask, Grass are the examples. It preserves R in all positions and has AE. Okay, hello everyone. So for the Upper South, this area includes all West Virginia except the countries bordering on Pennsylvania and Maryland. So at the present stage of investigation, we may observe that the dialects of the Upper South extend west of the Mississippi through southern Missouri and northern Arkansas and to north Texas, where it blends with that of the plantation south. Settled first from Pennsylvania and later from the south, which this region shows in its speech the mixed character that is to be expected under the circumstances. On the other hand, Lower South covers a large area which is the old plantation country, and it would be unreasonable to expect uniformity in it. So, the important vocal in this area are the Virginia Piedmont and the Low Country near the coast of South Carolina. In many districts, it agrees with Western New England and the loss of our sound finally and before consonant as in ka and hod, but tends to go even farther and omit the r sound before a word beginning with a vowel sound as in far way. But it does not have the rounded vowel in words like thop and hot or the broad a in grass and dance. For the upper south, Thus, the R sound is sounded as in the lower north, but all sound is generally pronounced as A or in the southern part of the area, as in many parts of the south. Let's take for example, the southerners don't say I or I the way we do. It is more of an A uh with a short A uh sound. They also say Ma for the word my also with a short a uh, sound for example in a sentence i have an eyelash in my eye in southerners you may hear that as i have an eyelash in my eye lastly for the lower south it is a distinctive feature of the southern dialect which has the treatment of the deaf tongue is out so when we say deaf tongue it is a sound formed by the combinations of two vowel sounds in a single syllable. So instead of the usual O sound, the southern speaker begins the tough tongue with A before voice consonants. So for the O sound, let's say in a word, sausage. Notice that it is a short little A sound with rounded lips, while not quite rounded. Oh, sausage, sausage. Another example for a word aunt, pronounced as aunt, aunt. While in Virginia and South Carolina, this diphthong takes from a eh sound before voice consonants, and finally, while in Virginia and South Carolina, this diphthong takes the form o sound before voiceless consonants. Let's take for example an A uh sound, which this sound is very open, like in the word apple. Apple. And if you pronounce it as apple, there's no problem with that. Also for the word ant, pronounced as ant, not ant, ant. Also, for a word actor, pronounced as actor. Another example for O sound is in a word both, no, show. So, yung E O sound, parang pinapaikot lang siya. Good day, everyone. Today, I will be discussing the rest of dialect in America.
The first one is the Gen General American. This variety and the next one, African American Vernacular English, are very controversial and unlike the dialect discussed, this is not directly reflecting geographical patterns of migrations and settlement. So, the generic American English or General American is the umbrella accent of American English spoken by majority of Americans encompassing a continuum rather than a single unified accent. At the same time of the first edition of the history, General American was widely accepted as one of the three main dialects of American English, along with the New England and Southern. Also, the gener General American English is somewhat vague and outdated term for a variety of spoken American English that seems to lack the distinctive characteristics of any particular region or ethnic group, also called network English. It is most commonly spoken in the Midland region, such as the terms Midland accent and gener general American are often used synonymously. The Midland region covers parts of Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Ohio. Next slide. Example of General American English. For example, an American might say, I have never gotten caught. Whereas a Brit would say, I have never got caught. Americans use both got and gotten in past participle, while Brits only use get. Next slide. We come now to the African American Vernacular English. So, one of the most intensive studies varieties of English during the past three decades has been the speech of many African American in the South and in Northern cities. The very name of this variety, African American Vernacular English or Vernacular Black English, indicates both that the variety is not a geographical dialect and also that it is not the dialect of all African Americans. The term vernacular refers to the non-standard features of the variety. Just as non-standard features of English, spoken mainly by whites, have both about the use of white vernacular. Also, African American vernacular English is the variety of English natively spoken particularly in urban communities by most working and middle class African. Next slide. I have here the example of African American vernacular English. This is the statement. I don't know what he'll may be doing, which means I don't know what my friend is usually doing. The other example is can't nobody think the way he do, which means nobody can think the way he does. I also have here in the next slide, I provided some of the vocabulary words that came from AAVE or the African American Vernacular English. The first one is the first word is dig which means to understand or appreciate bad good or really good be used to describe a habitual action blade which means knife strap gun or usually a pistol hood neighborhood often where someone grow up paper or money whip or car so the next one 
and lastly is the Hispanic American English. Like African American Vernacular English, Hispanic American English is a social and ethnic variety. But like the Anglo dialect of the Southwest, it is also a geographical variety for which isoglosis can be traced across the map. The Hispanic American English is unique among the major varieties of English in being the result of language and continuing contact within a biling bilingual culture. And yet, the complexity the complexity of the linguistic situation is such that some scholars have questions whether it is a dialect at all. The alternative would be to consider the features associated with Hispanic American English the result of language contact with Spanish and thus the manifestation of English learned a second language rather than the features of a stable dialect. The Hispanic American English is also known as Chicano English which phonology is character characteristically different from mainstream American English in terms of sounds, stress, pottering, patterning, intonation, and prosody. The alternative to be considered the features associated with Hispanic American English, the result of language, contact with Spanish and thus the manifestation of English learned a second language rather than features of a stable dialect. So that would be all for my report. Thank you for listening. Okay, so congratulations for reaching our destination. So as for our activity, we will just announce the game that we will be playing during our face-to-face -face session so that it would be a surprise to all of us. And the, these are the references that we've used in this presentation. Thank you so much for actively listening. Have a nice day.